Bio algebra students, we're in section 2.7. We're going to do our very, very last example together. And this one can be a little tricky. So I want you to listen pretty closely. You might have to rewind me and listen to me a couple of times before it actually sinks in what I'm trying to tell you. Okay? So let's say we're, we're given these two inequalities here. And um, the first one, let's just focus on A right now. We've got the absolute value of X minus 6 plus 7 is greater than 2. So let's say we're following our steps like I've instructed you to do. First step, get the absolute value alone. Okay, here it is. Got it. Okay, now this is where I'm going to try to get you to do some critical thinking here because think about it. When I plug in any number for x and I subtract 6 and I take the absolute value of that number other than the, again, taking the absolute value of 0, but any other positive or negative integer, if I take the absolute value of any positive or negative integer, my answer will always be positive. Okay? And my positive number is always going to be greater than this negative 5. Always. It will always be greater. Um, if I take the absolute value of 0, and that's 0, 0 is greater than negative 5. So you can look at this ahead of time and go, hey, I've got an absolute value that's greater than negative 5. If I take the absolute value of any number, and I get a positive number. A positive number is always greater than negative 5. So if you recognize that situation right now, and I know some of you in the class do, you, your answer to this question, you can stop this question right now and write for your answer all real numbers. Okay? Because no matter what I plug in for x, and when I subtract 6 and then take the absolute value of that number, I will always get a positive number or 0, depending on the number I plug in. And that will always be greater than or bigger than negative 5. So you can stop the question right there and, and write that as your answer. Or if you don't recognize that, you can just continue the question. Okay? So we've got the absolute value alone. So step 2 is, oh, it's greater than. Now remember, we've already learned that if it's absolute value is less than, less than, or equal to, I'm, it's a disjunction or conjunction, I'm going to use the word and. If it's greater than, greater than, or equal to, I'm going to use the word or because it's a disjunction. Okay, so that's, that's an interesting situation. I have a disjunction, so let's write that here. And then we're going to write our two statements. And then remember, when I write it again, I'm going to flip the symbol and change the sign. Okay? I'm going to flip the symbol, change the sign. Now I'm going to solve for x. So that means i got to add 6. So i got x is greater than 1, or I'm going to add 6 again. x is less than 11. Now remember, this is a disjunction, okay? Disjunctions don't have to overlap. They can but they don't have to. Unlike conjunctions, they absolutely have to. So when you graph this, you're going to notice something really interesting. Okay, I'm just going to take a little shortcut here. All right, so you got x is greater than 1, x is less than 11. Oh my goodness, I have a disjunction that overlapped. Hey, that's okay. What that tells you, anytime that happens, disjunctions that overlap, that happens occasionally, means the answer is all real numbers. The answer is all real numbers. So if you go back to my original discussion, Back over here, when I told some of you, hey, if you recognize this situation, you've got an absolute value that's greater than a negative number, that situation is always going to give you the answer, all real numbers. Always, 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 and forever. Okay? 
So you can either catch it there or you can go through all the work that you did here. You can do all the work and then make that discovery. Oh, I have a disjunction that overlap. They don't typically overlap. So what does it mean when a disjunction overlaps? It just means the answer is all real numbers. It means the answer is either on one line or the other. And it's all real numbers. I can find every single number on the number line on one line or the other. That's what it means. Okay? That might be a little bit hard to understand, but I hopefully I, I hope that I was very clear with you. Alright, we're going to move on to example 4B. And your key code word for this lesson is football. Put that word in the bottom right hand corner and then we're going to move on to 4B. Okay. So for B, let's take a look at this situation. I've got an absolute value, x plus 12, that's got a minus 5, and that's less than or equal to negative 6. Remember, step 1, you do need to get the absolute value by itself. That is non-negotiable. You must do this. Okay. And then it looks like negative 6 plus 5 is a negative 1. Okay. Now, for those of you who um, you're able to see this at this stage, you, what you, your situation is this. You have an absolute value that's less than a negative number. So let me talk you through this. When you take the absolute value of any number, negative or positive, the absolute value is always positive. So you're saying a positive can be less than negative 1. Well, no. Positives are never less than negatives. Positives are never less than negatives. So this situation is a no solution. You can see it here if you can reason it through with your critical thinking or move on and continue with the problem and let the graph show you that it's not possible. Okay? So let's go ahead. Let's go to step two. Assess the inequality symbol. It's less than or equal to, so that means this is an and problem. It's a disjunction or conjunction. Conjunctions have to overlap. Okay, it's a conjunction. So let's write our first statement. X plus 12 is less than or equal to negative 1. And then our second statement. X plus 12 is greater than or equal to positive 1. Okay, when you solve for X, so we're going to subtract 12 from each side, and I've got x is less than or equal to negative 13. Let's subtract 12, and I've got, for this one, x is greater than or equal to negative 11. Okay, that looks great. So let's get our number line going here. And let's do negative 10, negative 11, negative 12, negative 13. Remember, this has to overlap. It's an and. It's got to overlap. All right, so let's do um, x is less than or equal to negative 13. x is greater than or equal to negative 11. Wait a second. It's supposed to overlap, and it didn't. What does this tell you? Okay, conjunctions Remember, must overlap when they don't. The answer is no solution. Okay? The answer is no solution. So I would just write for this, I would put that null set there, right in the middle or underneath it. I didn't have room underneath it to write it, not much at least. But you can write that. Make sure that it's really clear. Either write the words no solution or null set really clear. So you could have caught it here at this level and said, hey, it's not possible. If I take the absolute value of the number, it's positive, and positives are never less than negatives. That's a no solution. Or you can keep working and see that, oh, it didn't overlap. The graph didn't overlap like it should have. Now you gotta be on your toes for this, because if you're, you're if you're just on autopilot and you're solving the problem, um, you may not recognize what you've got here. Remember, conjunctions have to overlap. When they don't, 
the answer is no solution. That's the key to this, okay? This is extra tricky. These are very, very special situations. So um, when you come to class tomorrow, I will give you, let me see here. I'll go ahead and give you one right now. I want you to try one right now. So just flip your paper over or get a, a sheet of notebook paper. And let's try this one, okay? Four times the absolute value of x minus three and a half is less than or equal to negative eight. Okay, that's one. And then let's try another one. Let's do absolute value of x minus nine is greater than or equal to negative 11. Now, those are two. Now, I will tell you this. You, the answers are either no solution or all real numbers. So you need to recognize if you're not sure what happened in, you know, that you can tell, then go ahead and work the problem all the way out and let the graph drive your answer. Okay. If you can tell, you, know, you can't tell from this step until you get the absolute value alone. That's always your first step. You make no judgments until the absolute value is alone. Then you can assess it. Okay, then you can look at it and use your common sense and your critical thinking to make that assessment. Okay, so at the very least, I need to see where you made the move to get the absolute value alone first. Then you can write your answer after I see that step. Okay, that's it for now, and I'm happy that you have some extra credit. So go ahead and put EC plus one. EC plus one for each one, and then go for it. All right, thanks for watching.